I don't love my parents anymore is something that most people can't imagine saying even if it were true. Yet a study in 1997 states that 7% of children cut ties with their mom and 27% of children cut ties with their dad after they become an adult. But how could that be? Parents always do the right thing for their children, right? Parents Where's are always supportive. I don't know. They never hurt us in any way. They never judge us and they accept us for who we are. And above all, they never ever use their authority as a parental figure to guilt trip us into getting what they want right so anyways i got bored and i figured it'd be cool to look up the top five worst parenting styles that ruin future adult parent relationships and i thought it'd be cool to look up five different real life experiences that i found on the internet to explain each one now without further ado let's look up the five worst parent styles that ruin dust ass kids now let's head to reddit for our first story I changed your diapers and saw everything. Now you're hiding your body from me. What is this obsession they have with our body? I was changing my shirt and my mom was in a room, so I turned around and she said that phrase referring to the title. And I said, I'm an adult and it's my body. I can hide if I want. You're disgusting. She said, you're so disrespectful. Calling your own mother disgusting. And I said, oh, I have to respect you, but you don't have to respect me. You've called me a lot worse in my life. And of course she said, like what? I swear they either have selective memory or they generally play dumb or they really don't think they ever did anything wrong. They think they are always right somehow. Now this is important. Maybe this is why I have so many body image issues because it was never my body. It was ours. Personal story time. I relate to the story a little bit. I live in a very physical touchy based household and I have no problem with that. That just isn't personally my love language. And I remember certain times growing up, my mom would just would hug me randomly, touch me randomly and for X, Y, Z reason, she didn't really need one. And I remember getting a little bit frustrated, not for any reason in particular. I just didn't want to get touched. One day I made the mistake of saying that to her and then she responded with, you are my my child I can touch you whenever I want to and as a kid you accepted that but in the back of my mind I would just think to myself could you though I can't have some boundaries and that right there leads to my first point number one parents who view their children as property that they own obviously parents have a moral and legal responsibility to their own children but to act like your children have no right to their own bodies or shouldn't have any type of boundaries is insane and i've been researching what the psychological or medical term for this may be but everything i've looked up so far it seems to stem back to narcissism i mean i get it you've raised us since we were infants and you got used to us needing you forever of course i'd imagine that to be a hard transition to a child that doesn't want you involved as much but narcissism is different for a narcissistic parent your body is not yours they think just because they fed you and gave you a place to sleep that's also a reason to not give you boundaries in their mind you're merely an extension of who they are and how dare you try to do anything different than what they tell you to do now if you're a child of a narcissistic parent who treated you more like property than an actual human being how have you been affected by this growing up and how can you cope with it now as an adult you know funny enough there's only been as recent as 2018 where there's actually been a formal study on the effects that narcissistic parenting has on the mental Mental health of children. Physical or sexual abuse have a very obvious effect on the mental health of a child. However, research has found that the children of narcissistic parents typically have a significantly higher rate of depression and low self-esteem than those who don't have a narcissistic parent. Research has also shown that trauma has an adverse effect on the reward centers of the brain, making people more susceptible making people more susceptible making people more susceptible susceptible receptive to <laughs> substance abuse and other addictions if your mom or dad was a narcissist chances are you suffer from long-term anxiety bipolar disorder ocd and ptsd you grew up feeling responsible for your parents needs and you've developed a people-pleasing tendency that translates to your other adult relationships in your life and as an extension you've probably developed codependency issues putting other people's needs above your own and chances are you're also struggling with what a healthy romantic relationship looks like and there's a good chance you're probably probably dating a narcissist yourself. And what psychology can teach us about coping from having a narcissistic parent is number one, acknowledge the abuse that happened. Acknowledgement of the abuse is the first step to giving power back to the person that was victimized. Number two, set firm boundaries. Unfortunately, most of us don't have the financial means to drop everything and leave our parents at home, especially if we're too young to actually do so. But psychology suggests really honing down and setting clear, very distinctive boundaries between you and your narcissistic parent. And the best way to do that is number three, seek professional help. There is no amount of willpower to help you out better than walking us through with an actual human being licensed to help in that particular area. And that's why I'm happy to announce today's sponsor better. Nah, I don't have a sponsor. Ah, sorry. That was a joke. <laughs> well, anyways, let's head to the next story. 
figured it'd be better for me to stand up for this one. My mother consistently uses the line, I gave up my life for you. Or, if it weren't for me giving up everything, you wouldn't even be where you are. Or, I'm your mother. It seems every time we try to have a normal conversation, she spews some stuff that makes me feel like she wants me to feel some kind of guilt in my life. I just don't get why she wants me to feel guilty for all the things she did for me and my brother. Now these things weren't extraordinary. These are things like feeding us, buying clothes from Goodwill. She did a good job, and I'm not saying she isn't, but she wants me to bow down to her. Last night, she texted me after getting into an argument, which is every time we talk, and she told me I'm the sorriest person that ever lived, and I asked why, and I told her to pray about it. Did you pray today? She went on a rampage and blew up at me, told me I've changed, I'm acting different, and she doesn't even know me anymore. I really don't know how much more I could take. By the way, this has been going on my entire life, so it's not like it just happened. She always makes me feel guilty for everything. Obviously, there's a lot to unpack here. And of course, with stories like this, you never get the full picture. You only get what you see from the child's perspective. But that does lead perfectly to my second point. Now, that's weird. I'm not expecting anyone. Who could that be? Oh, yeah. It's number two, parents who use their responsibility as parents to guilt trip their children. Coming from someone who is not a parent, I acknowledge that the role of a parent is still one of the most difficult jobs in the world. Feeding, giving shelter, and providing an overall great life for another human being for at least 18 years is a daunting task to say the least. In my opinion, even if you hate your parents, if you can admit that they've otherwise done a good job at putting food on the table and providing your necessities, as a child, we should 100% be grateful. But as a parent, taking what you're obligated to do as a provider and throwing it back in your kids faces to guilt trip us to get your way should be a criminal offense whether you plan for it or not giving birth was a decision that you follow through with and your kids had zero say in the matter guilt tripping your kids because you did your job as a mom was like punishing someone else for a decision that you made you don't walk into a dog kennel buy a dog and then tell that dog how grateful they should be that you feed and take care of them none of that was up for negotiation when you made the purchase claudia that's what you're supposed to do why do parents parents guilt trip and how has that affected us as kids everything i've researched as far points back to it just simply being easier for them to get what they want out of us psychologically as children we're prone to want to please our parents and i found something really cool online that spoke about the difference between buying allegiance and being respected some parents fear that earning respect the right way can either take too long or may not work at all so they choose the easier path of buying our allegiance by constantly reminding us of all the good they've done for us as a parent as a kid they they did this to us to convince us to clean our room. As an adult, they do this to convince us to do favors we otherwise wouldn't feel comfortable doing. And thanks to that, similar to being a child of a narcissist, being a child of a guilt tripping parent can also lead to long-term anxiety, long-term depression, and paranoia. How can we solve it? That, that perfectly leads to number... <laughs> That was weird. Did your parents ever compare you to other kids? How did it make you feel? Constantly. A real ballerina is so skinny. You need to eat less. Look at that girl. She's already in the Olympics. And look at you. What are you even doing? My friend's son is playing piano on the radio. Why are you kidding around? Now I have zero confidence. Honestly, my mom's words made me want to kill myself every day. I never did any of my hobbies for anyone else, but she'd constantly tell me I'd never be good enough. I suspect she did so I would focus on school and become the doctor she wanted me to be. Now that story was a perfect example of number three, parents who compare us to other kids. Now out of all the worst parenting styles on this list this one was the most annoying to me mainly because they think by doing this we're automatically going to be motivated to be like the person they're comparing us to oh, well this girl's already in the olympics what are you doing you know what mom yeah you're right let me get right on that I remember the time I broke the mouse to the family computer, and as a knee-jerk reaction, my mom said, how could you be so careless? So-and-so's son has a computer for 10 years, and he never broke it. And I just remember thinking, okay, what am I supposed to do with this information? And guess what? I still felt like crap afterwards. Comparison is the fastest way to break trust with your children and make them feel as if they're incapable of measuring up. By comparing us to another person's kid, you're indirectly saying that that person's kid is a kid that you actually want. The long-term effects of this can lead us down two roads, severe people-pleasing or a continuous anxious feeling of never being good enough. To cope with this, you and also establish your own standard of excellence or identify your own measuring stick. For example, your parents' definition of success could be you getting into the Olympics. But if you made it clear to yourself that your definition of success is simply being the best ballerina in your town, it doesn't matter what your parents think and it'll start losing its effect on you. Now, on to the next story. God, I hope that transition was cool.
my mom's trophy child i think i can finally put my experience into words after years of internal incoherent screaming that went inside my head i've come to terms with the fact that my mom uses me as her trophy child if i got good grades or did something impressive she showered me with love my daughter is so smart ah, ha, ha, ha. i am so happy you are so talented but the minute i failed it was always you are worth nothing why don't you become a maid because with your lack of skills you won't get anywhere in life love was so conditional that i felt pressure to always perform and be 100 percent even now if i'm sick she will yell at me for being sick like it's my fault and then tell me to call the doctor because i need to study for exams and i can't be sick for her none of my friends are good enough no one is good enough if they aren't performing as per her standards honestly i'm done with this cesspool of a family i just want unconditional love for once man I i'm so tired of always trying to be the best i really wish i was enough as a daughter to her the idea of her bragging about me makes me want to throw up i feel like i'm a resume she built number four parents who treat their kids like the trophy child trophy child syndrome is in some ways the exact opposite of parents who compare you to other kids if you were the trophy child chances are you were the example that our parents chose to be more like you and we hate you for it. But that doesn't mean you didn't get your fair share of punishment either. Trophy child syndrome or golden child syndrome is when a parent highly favors a child over others because they are seen as a symbol of that parent's success. You were the kid if you got an A in class, not only did your parents feel the need to show it off to your siblings, but your aunts had to know, your neighbors had to know, your classmates had to know, your classmates parents had to know, your classmates parents dogs had to know, your mailman. That unfortunately means that the pressure they have to bear being the trophy child is tremendous. Like the woman in the Reddit story, you were in your mother's good graces so as long as you lived up to her expectations. But the second you did something that was less than worthy enough to brag to the entire town about, you might as well have been scum. And this is another form of narcissistic parenting. That means your parents view you as an object and they try to live their unmet successes and unfulfilled dreams vicariously through you. And because of that, not only are you more likely to be unliked by your other siblings and peers no one likes to be compared to but the long-term effects of that much pressure on a kid can lead to an unhealthy need to achieve no real sense of self people pleasing taking on the role of the adult way too soon and the fear of failure now what are some ways you can cope with this research suggests having the conversations as an adult with your parent and set strict boundaries within the family unit maintain support systems that promote the messiness of authenticity and imperfection and practice mindfulness and meditation whenever the anxiety arises. Oh, and of course, now it's time for the fun. Huh? Whooping your kids is abuse and is not how a kid should be brought up. If your kid has accidentally broken a window, take away their phone, cut down their TV privileges, but don't start hitting them with a bell. Kids should grow up doing things wrong and feeling genuine regret and remorse and not be terrified of it if they're getting whooped or not. So many people grow up with parents hitting them with spoons or hitting them with sandals and thinking it's completely normal. This shouldn't be considered as a normal parenting strategy. It should be considered as abuse. A parent can't see a headline like, man who abused wife and kids dies in prison and can't go, that guy should rot in hell and then start whipping little Timmy with his belt for accidentally breaking his mother's vase. This is a tricky one and I'm not gonna stand here and tell other people how they should punish their kids so I'll sit down. Growing up in a Caribbean household meant that my skin and my mom's belt became well acquainted one too many times. Now, I'm not here to argue whether whooping your child in general is right or wrong, but if your first reflex after your child makes a mistake is to grab a belt, then that is definitely wrong. And here's why. As a parent, why do you want to discipline your child? It's to prevent wrong or immoral actions from happening again in the future. From a psychological perspective, punishment should be seen as a way to teach kids right from wrong, what can be tolerated and what will not be tolerated, ultimately with the goal of helping them become a better socially acceptable adult. Which is why I also don't agree with parents who are afraid to punish their kids at all. It's as if they care more about being liked as a friend than being respected as their parent. And those kids almost always grow to be socially unbearable adults because they literally receive zero negative reinforcement for bad behavior. If we can agree that the ultimate goal of punishment is to correct behavior, can we also agree to match the punishment with the crime? All right guys, let's play a quick game of match the punishment. Does breaking a vase on accident match the punishment of physical abuse? No! Even if it was a $1,000? No! Wow. Does getting a bad grade on a report card match the punishment of physical abuse? No! Even if you got an F? No! So you mean to tell me beating a child with a belt actually doesn't help them with their grades? 
Wow, no way. Does winning an argument against a parent match the punishment of physical abuse? No! Even if the parent's ego is hurt? No! Wow, how insightful. Thanks for playing, guys. Again, I'm not a parent, but I can see that there may be some extreme examples where physical punishment may be the best way to get the message through to a kid. I'm not gonna list it here, but here's a good rule of thumb. If you wouldn't do it to an adult, don't do it to a kid. Why do some parents resort to physical punishment as their first and only discipline tactic? Well, truthfully, it's the same as parents who guilt trip. It's usually the easiest and fastest way to stop unwanted behavior from a child. But unfortunately, like most things in life, anything that starts off as and easy, usually long-term leads to worse results. Research suggests that the long-term effects of children who've been regularly physically punished tend to exhibit high hormonal reactivity to stress or overreacting to stress, higher likelihood of developing antisocial behavior or abnormal aggression and violence in future relationships, and a literal change in brain structure. And they are also more likely to consider suicide. And out of all the worst parenting styles that we've discussed so far in this video, this would be the leading cause of what destroys a future relationship between an adult child and their parent. If you were a child who experienced constant physical punishment growing up, how can you cope with it now as an adult? It really depends. If you believe you've had otherwise great parents, research suggests learning to separate the action of the spanking from the person that you love. Research also suggests a concept known as reparenting, where we as adults give our inner child the love and compassion that we lacked in our childhood and prove to ourselves that we are worthy of love and support despite the circumstances. And we all know the one source of support that will benefit us the most. All right, hold up. Let me just get over here. Hey guys, I just want to give a special thank you to everyone who made it to the end of this video. I did not think I was going to have as much fun as I did filming and editing this one. And I just want to make it very clear, mom, in case you're watching, this was not made out of spite against any of my parents as I love them both very much. But hopefully this could speak to a person who either had parental trauma or is a parent that wants to avoid potentially losing a future relationship with their child, which I can only imagine is very terrible. All the links to the articles and sources that I've researched for this video will be in the description down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you found any value and want to see more content like this. That'll let me know that this is something you guys want to see in the future. And now it's only appropriate for me to leave this video off with a word from our favorite professional therapist. susceptible.